Ladies and gentlemen, uh, permit me to invite the moderator of the next panel, Victor Jordan. Uh, Victor is uh, an economist, and he's also a professor at the Department of Africana Studies at Brooklyn College here in New York. Victor? Uh, thank you uh, very much, Basil. Yes, uh, thank you. So I, I teach, uh, actually, um, major themes in Caribbean studies at Brooklyn College. Uh, in the past, I've taught economics and law, but I've also been a trade negotiator with the African, Caribbean, Pacific, and European agreement, which the African countries and the Caribbean countries and the Pacific countries has with the European Union. So I know the challenges that you face when you must sit down with very powerful individuals at a table to try to iron out an agreement. Uh, I've also been involved in conciliation, uh, which is trying to resolve uh, conflicts between different groups. But in conciliation, the conciliator put a greater burden on the parties to resolve their own conflict than in mediation. So uh, we have very interesting speakers on this panel. Uh, we have two uh, individuals from uh, Kenya. Uh, uh, Samuel and Jackson, and they will uh, present on uh, traditional approaches to resolving conflicts in involving groups in uh, northern Uganda and eastern Kenya. So we'll interview uh, Samuel and uh, Jackson. Uh, thank you. My name is Kochomai. I know many people would read Kochomei, uh, so I'd like to be referred to as Kochomai. And my uh, co-researcher here is Jackson. I, I work for Mount Kenya University in Kenya. Um, the, 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 the presentation we are going to make is um, you know, research we did it's part of a bigger research we are doing about, um, you know, the the, the success and, and of of, of um, you know indigenous mechanisms in uh, conflict um, management, especially in particular kind of conflict you find in northern Kenya, called cut wrestling, elsewhere referred to as cut raids, uh, and as such. Um, so. What we, we, we did in this research um, was to find out why, I'm, I'm going to go to the, the PowerPoints, why the previous interventions have failed in addressing the particular conflict um, we, we were researching on. And there, there are very uh, interesting revelations from our point of view. We don't know, maybe you, you will also give us feedback later on about it. So. Let me introduce um, um, sorry, sorry. Let me introduce um, the, 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 the topic. Um, the pastoral communities occupying you know, eastern Uganda and large part of northwestern Kenya um, have been in conflict for a long time. In fact, because we don't have recorded history. The only recorded history about, um, the, the, the earliest recorded history was by explorers, including those of you who have been uh, done history, Count Teleki and the others, who made mention of these communities and uh, found them having uh, been in conflict. That's the earliest record we, 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 we had. We have about um, the conflict. Now, to come down to our interest is that we, the Pocot referred in history before, um, written history before uh, 1950 as Souk, have been in cut wrestling conflict with their neighbors in Uganda like Karamojong, Turkana in Kenya, Sabin in both uh, Kenya and Uganda, Samburu in Kenya, 
and Marakwet in Kenya. You know, these communities um, raid cattle from each other for many reasons that, um, you know, we've captured in our literature review. And, and I think if, if, if um, this presentation passes into publication, I think you might have, but enjoy uh, part of the literature review and the insight that that literature review produces. Now, we're saying that past cut rustling interventions have not been successful in ending cattle rustling problem. And for how long have these, um, you know, intervention been uh, attempted since colonial period? And um, that leads us to a problem we're saying many interventions by the state and non-state actors, of course non-state actors include uh, individual efforts, NGO efforts, civil society efforts, FBOs or other you know, uh, faith-based organizations um, and many other groups have largely failed to end cut wrestling culture between the Pokot and Haredic neighbors. And we're saying the failure as, as revealed by Literature Review, has been blamed on two, um, two areas. Actors in effective interventions, as well as others have suggested uh, that uh, it's not ending because of the unwillingness to change, the community's unwillingness to change from that cattle raiding culture. So we proceeded from there to say therefore that from that basis we sought to examine whether the cultural system of the Pokot is responsible for the failure of the past conflict interventions and to attempt to address that uh, we explored particularly the Pokot generation set system dynamics and its relationship with conflict and peace. So instead of looking at the, big, the bigger culture or whatever, we pick at one, um, you know, w w one specific area of um, the generation set system. And we paid particular emphasis on how generation set system uh, facilitates either conflict or peace. And uh, to, 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 to get to our um, um, answer those questions and rather respond to our you know, problem, we, uh, our methodological approach was uh, qualitative, where we um, had interviews and focus groups. And the people we interviewed were elders, because elders would give us history and um, you know, you know, intricate details about the generation set system and we went to non-state actors to help us with their understanding of why interventions in the past have failed. Uh, we also um, uh, paired up that with focus group discussion of elders, warriors, and peace actors. And the study area um, was in Pokot North, sub-county uh, in Kenya, and Amudat district in Uganda, and, 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 and the, the communities here have one unique um, uh, characteristic. The Pokot community in that region have interacted a lot with their neighbors, and they have borrowed, there's a lot of division of cultural practices between, or among those, uh, between the Pokot and those cultures. And what our, our findings, We found that generation, uh, generation set system is a social and political organizing structure. Now, let, let me, let me b before I go uh, later on to our um, finding number four, uh, let me just provide this background so that we, are, we all have understanding. Now, in the generation set system of the Pokot and um, the Karamojong, um, people are put into two main groups. 
and, and, and uh, two, two uh, main groups and a third one, which is not very active. Now, these two main groups, one is called Ngimor, the other one is called uh, Ngete. Now, when, w w for example, my son, um, let's assume I'm a Pakot. My son, if I belong to Ngete clan, my son will belong to the other one. The, not Ngete clan, the, the generation set. Then my son b becomes in the next one because there are two major ones. And then my grandson will become part of mine, will join mine. So uh, the grandson belongs to the generation set of their grandfathers. Okay? So, so, um, so the community is divided into two um, generation sets. Now, these two generation sets have, um, have, have a particular you know, mandates. So let, let me come to my PowerPoints. The Pokot culture has two alternative generation sets, Ngete and Ngimor, with mandates for pursuing peace, so they uh, become regime of war, or pursuing war, sorry, they become regime of peace, or pursuing war, becoming the regime of war, respectively. Now, the generation set in power defines community aspirations. Um, as we we'll, we'll, in, in, our, in, our, in our finding number four, I'll illustrate uh, the, 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 how these generations, how one generation gets into power so that they can define those aspirations. In other words, uh, if you go to the detailed presentation, you'll, uh, in our detailed paper, you'll see the sentiments uh, that um, leads to that conclusion to the extent that generation set in, uh, you know, in power defines community aspirations. If I remember one, one, one of the, 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 the sentiments by one uh, you know, interviewee was, uh, you cannot make peace when, they, when it's time for war. Our second finding was that uh, generation said identities can be negative or a positive force for either peace or conflict. By producing regimes of war or peace, generation set systems entrench belief that uh, can either support efforts towards peace or support, uh, you know, uh, you know, no, no, you know, push towards war, and therefore. Uh, you know, you know, d depending on 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 on, um, on which regime is in power, it can either perpetuate peace or perpetuate war. Ge uh, finding number three: Generation set is a political regime, and here we say it's a political regime because the mandate of uh, you know generation set in power is to make decisions for and on behalf of the community of, on many issues ranging from you know, cultural issues, uh, economic issues, political issues of that particular uh, community. So, um, and we said there is an opportunity there for you know, peacemakers and, and the community development people who can, who can take that advantage. Because we are saying the generation said in power can actually choose to make decision in favor of peace or war. And, and, and that's an opportunity uh, for peace actors. Number four, I mean our point number four, rather our, our finding number four. And um, now this is, we, we feel um, when uh, we were holding discussion with uh, my colleague, we, f we felt that um, this is our key, very important finding. And, you know, because it illustrates why the, the interventions have failed. It, and and we, we have linked that to the generation set system. And I'll begin by, um, you know, perhaps sharing with you how um, generation set, you know, becomes mandated or takes over power. 
But before I go to that, we say uh, Gimor, the reigning generation set, has clung on power for more than a century. Now, in these generation sets, when one ascends to power, they are given over a hundred years to do whatever they, they, they have to do before they hand over power to the next generation set. And, and um, we observe that uh, just as political regimes wish to hold power a little longer, Nimor also went into doing that. And we'll illustrate uh, in a short while when we, we want to provide the timelines. Um, so by this regime of war, by, by this regime of war extending, uh, sorry, by, by this regime of war extended, um, okay, forgive for that, I think uh, the, the, there's a typographical error or something like that. But you're saying by that, they extended the regime of what? The regime of war. And that's why we are thinking the reason why the war is with the, with the Bokot and the neighbors is going on. Um, Good. Now, uh, generation said in power is given mandate to war for Gimor or to peace for Ngete, but that follows a certain procedure. Um, the transfer of power from one generation said to another involves a procedure of rituals conducted one in uh, prescribed ritual sites, two within specified timelines, and three in a particular order, and lastly, it must be confirmed by the ritual expert that it was successful. This ritual expert is a cultural expert called a seer. I don't know, uh, brothers from Nigeria or South Africa or other parts of the world have people uh, referred to as seers, people who's the kind of prophet who can tell you um, what is in the offing for the future. So regimes seek to achieve exceptional legacies by breaking the previous records. Now, let me illustrate that. If the regime of peace is in power, they will work as much as they could to ensure they overtake the previous regime of peace in establishing peace, um, you know, con I mean, peace, peace context. Whereas if the regime of war is the one in, in power, they will wage enough war to the extent that they break the record of the previous regime of war. And so you can imagine uh, that kind of competition. And um, uh, now, the timelines. How uh, we said the generation said is responsible for um, you know, the extended uh, conflict between the Bokot and our neighbors because uh, the Nimor, who are regime of war, extended their reign. And I want to trace, um, um, you know, how they did that. In 1850s, now we looked at records, uh, historical records. Uh, in 1850s, we think that that is when Ngete, the regime of peace, handed power to Nimor. So that, you know, that's the time the regime of war took power. And, but by 1890s, they were successful. You know, the regime of war was successful. They, they beat their neighbors. They defeated them. Um, they, and in, in, in our detailed um, paper, you'll find they pushed uh, their ethnic enemies like Maasai, others like Oromo and Uganda, uh, the Nandi of the time, and, and the Samburu. And came uh, 19, 1890s and they, had, they experienced losing spiral, they were defeated. There were also other uh, factors that weakened them. There were animal diseases, rinderpest, and, I mean, five minutes, five minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm about. Uh, raids, animal diseases, rinderpest, and then smallpox for human beings. And then came uh, 1920s, they took um, a diplomatic route and made peace with their neighbors. But instead of doing all the rituals to transfer power to the next generation, they did two and waited until 1965 to do the final one. And uh, from our interview, we were told uh, somehow that was too long time.
to allow that to proceed. So by 1990s, sorry, um, in 1990s, the new cycle was started. But now, because power handover in this generation set does not occur in time of turmoil and, 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 and crisis, um, it was uh, postponed because of uh, Uganda disarm and operations that targeted cross-border communities, which included the Pokot and the Karamojong. And then by 2015, uh, they re resumed and uh, the cycle is also going and they hope that power will uh, successfully be handed over in 2020. And therefore, we were saying that uh, this was our important finding because we have established that just the way political regimes wish to hold power a little longer, Nimbo generation said has delayed to hand over power to allow itself to stay in power and thus the perpetuation of conflict or an ending cut wrestling between the Pokot and her neighbors. And then uh, we're saying that um, those who have gone to pastoralists for making peace have not been told that generation, this generation that in power will not allow you to make peace, and therefore they have ended um, spending time and then eventually failing. And lastly, we also established that um, if actors in peace look more into the cultural framework to establish what works, there will be more success. And there's a success story of one organization called Pokatusa, which was a world vision together with a few other actors that attempted to bring down uh, Kadras. And therefore, we are saying there are virgin revelations and opportunities with cultural systems uh, for enhancing peace outcomes. So uh, our conclusion, therefore, say, we say that um, the cultural system of the Pokot is responsible for the unending uh, conflict between themselves and their neighbors. And I thank you for listening.